Hey, we're here with Victor from Ice Engine Works, and today we're going to be working with the inch and three quarter modeling block set to uh, build a, a kind of a standard uh, setup for a header. Um, we're going to be using two and three inch centerline radiuses. So, uh, Victor, if you would uh, give us a little bit more uh, explanation on what's in a kit uh, when you buy it and uh, kind of what we're going to be working with here today. Yes, well, as, uh, as Bryson said today, we're just going to give a quick uh, overview of how uh, we work the system, you know, how we use uh, Ice Engine Works to develop uh, a quick design. Uh, for this particular uh, e exercise, we're going to use uh, two and three inch uh, center lines simply because of the fact that we have a kind of like a limited space. Um, and we're starting presenting how the block sets uh, come in. They come in a pl uh, plastic case. And uh, they include instructions, they include uh, bags of different types and shapes of blocks and uh, block adapters, which are the little plugs that we're going to use to attach the um, blocks to the flanges with, with the starter tubes. So let's get started. All right. So as, uh, we, as our original plan, we're going to use uh, only three shapes. We're going to use a straight block. We're going to use a uh, two-inch centerline radius block and a three-inch centerline uh, radius block. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we got a flange already with starter tubes, a solid uh, uh, location for our block, so we can start connecting it to our desired location in the uh, collector dummy. Uh, you can use also a regular collector or a uh, you know st uh, slip type collector, depending on what you want. We developed this part simply to ease the um, trouble of having to find the right location and create a solid uh, fixed point uh, B where we're going to be landing and, and exercise, um, starting reviewing our, our design. So first thing is attaching the blocks. We're going to pick um, which shape do you think you might do? Let's uh, do a... I'd say start with, the start with this with one. one there, yeah. So we're picking a three inch centerline radius block. Uh, the procedure is very simple. These things just slide in. And we're, we we got to make sure that they are flushed. So the, the way these work is when you tighten the bolt, the rubber uh, discs will expand. And in the case of the, the one over the block, it needs to expand um, the rubber side over the, the block. So if it's not properly flushed, it will expand right in the middle of it, and it will crack it. So we got to make sure it's, uh, it's, uh, it's past that and it's flushed. And then we just simply insert it and then um, tighten it until the, the rubber starts expanding. These are designed to work uh, anywhere with from 18 to 16 gauge uh, metal, assuming of course the tubing is precise. Uh, unfortunately, we've noticed that out in the market th there are, there's tubing that says you know one three quarters in this case for example it measures you know thirty thousands forty thousands over so you got to make sure that it's a quality product in cases like that it's very simple just to put anywhere from aluminum foil to masking tape just to create more of a shim just simply that this thing can grab on the inner walls of the tube but now that we're ready from this point on we can start plugging in blocks as we desire and we start creating our shape the the reason we developed this is because when we use this type of uh, collectors, the, the form collectors, these are made out of a, a cone that is just crimped. Usually the precision is not exactly there. There's a, there's a lot of leeway, which in a way is good. It helps us, but at the same time it creates the problem of having, um, it's very difficult sometimes to actually line up the tubes. So what we created this is as a template to make sure that all the tubes that go in here, first of all, will be parallel and uh, and that will simplify the welding and just to give you an example if we put this here there's again all this motion that is very difficult when we uh, try to weld it also aesthetically it looks terrible you know so we like to have them nicely parallel and this also helps in the flow because we have more of you know conserve more of the energy of the flow in the in the, in the same direction so these guys plug in all the way in here and they are perfectly parallel. So the whole idea is once we're we design with these things, um, they have a common stop, so they are flushed. Um, eventually, when we de develop the metal ve version, we will, you know, we're replacing this with metal sections, and they will end up at the same point. 
And then when we're ready, when everything is welded, we can remove this and simply just slip on the actual collector and then just tack it. That's really the, the advantage of this thing. The alternative is to use this there, but as you can see, it's very difficult to locate it, to put it in, in, in a firm position without really damaging the finish. We'll have to tack into this and then later clean it up. That's why we develop these things. In theory, you can put this anywhere you need around the engine, you know, whether you're shooting you know, in the front, you're going up, you're going down, anywhere you want, you just create the braces to hold this. You can do anything to these things. You can bolt them, clamp them, tack them, anything you want to do. You can be ugly to these things. They're made out of 60, uh, 12 gauge, uh, 304. They can always be cleaned, but you will always save the finish of your, of your collector. So with this in mind, now it's really a matter of connecting point A to point B. And of course we have a lot of options. This is really one of the benefits of our system. It gives you a lot of options to be able to review which one, which one is the best. We can put this cylinder on this quadrant or on this one or on that one, on that one, or we can, and then we can go this way, we can go that way, we can play with the firing order. There's so many options. Um, and that's really the, uh, the whole point of, of using this system. So uh, Bryson, if you want to do the owners and start uh, laying out something, yeah. we'll just uh, play along for a little bit. It doesn't really take a, a long time to develop something, even if you're a first time user. Our experience with some of our clients, you know, within 30, 40 minutes, first time around, you're able to create a full system on a bank, you know, on, on one side. And that gives you a very good idea as far as uh, how to start improving from that point. So what are the, each one of the blocks, what are the lengths of the blocks and what they represent? That's a very good question. What we did on the um, EH series, uh, exhaust header series, is give each block exactly one inch at the imaginary arc length. And the reason is we're interested in performance. We want to know that we can tune a header exactly to a length that ev either our dyno experience is telling us or engine builder is telling us or simply we just want to choose um, a certain length. So what we did is we gave every block exactly one inch at the center line. So to create, for example, a 22 inch uh, uh, header, we just need to count 22 blocks regardless of their shape uh, making it to the same point and then we coil them and and you know package them in such a way that they fit That's really the whole purpose um, All the engineering all the science of how to make a header tune is out there the challenge for Always has been how to package it in the available space. So that's what we're trying to solve with our system Sounds good. So all right. Well, Bryson works. I'll explain a little bit of the um, uh, philosophy or the guide, the sign guidelines. Every block is um, molded with some uh, markings that are very helpful for the design. The most important one is the, is the arrows at the very top of it. When those arrows are aligned and you're using the same center line radius, uh, we are actually saving ourselves a lot of work because this means that all this section can come out of the same U-bend. So the more, we, the more blocks we're able to use of the same type, the less work we want to do. And that's what we want. We want to produce the best performing header without really having to spend a whole week building it. So like in he's doing here, in this case, we're trying to connect as many of the same type to be able to lessen the amount of work and, um, and at the same time create the shape that uh, will, will fit in the allocated space. Another thing uh, important in our design is these arrows also signal that every time there's a break in their line, we, mean we need to create a new section, which means we need to have a cut and a weld. So when we're designing and we keep that in mind, we try to avoid situations like this where we have different changes in, in planes because this means a lot of cut and a weld, a cut and a weld, and a cut and a weld. If we go back and review our design and start cleaning this up a little bit, it will take us literally minutes, uh, if not seconds. Uh, we're saving ourselves hours of work, hours of cutting, hours of welding, and that's really the whole point.
That's pretty clean. Look at that. Pretty clean. So in this case, uh, Bryson was able to fit the whole thing in without really any gap. Sometimes there's a little bit of an issue. Obviously, we're rounding it up to the next inch. But sometimes it's just simply making it up. You know, you may have a little bit of a quarter of an inch gap or an, uh, uh, um, an eighth of an inch that can easily be made up when you're cutting uh, your metal. So it's, it's still a, a relatively imperfect method, but it's very close to the, the real thing. Because we're, you know, we're still human. We're still having, in, you know, inducing a lot of human error. Um, but yeah, in general, I mean, this took, what, three minutes probably to build, lay out. Something like that. Um, yeah. And again, if there's anything in the design that we don't like, we can always go back and change it. And again, it will take three, four, five minutes to, re you know, find another solution. So all these layouts, all these different designs uh, allow us to evaluate uh, the criteria that we are trying to put into our design, whether it's performance, regardless of the work, whether it's just creating a quick uh, solution that won't take the, you know, too much time, or create something that is extremely good looking and appealing, maybe for a show car, you know? So everything can be worked with this, just as long as you have your, your mission you know, set uh, as far as what the purpose of the design is. So, all right, you want to move to another one? Yeah, let's keep going. All right. Bam. So it only took us about 15 minutes to get to this point here, uh, to where we're now ready to transfer the modeling blocks over to uh, converting it into the actual tubing. So Victor, you want to explain to us a little bit of how that happens? Yes, so Bryson just finished uh, what we call in our system stage one, which is the modeling and design. Uh, he got the shape, uh, he got all the features he wants, uh, length, etc., the layout. Um, and then now, as he mentions, we're ready now to move on to stage two, which is the, the, the cutting of the uh, metal sections to start replacing. So uh, completing section one, uh, stage one, we're going to fill out the uh, control sheets. Uh, these are really the brains of the uh, project because they will allow us to download all this information into a practical uh, data that we can use for as a shopping list and also to budget and also to, to create the, the, the ultimately the final cost of our, of our um, project. So um, following with that, uh, again, all, those, uh, all that information is uh, included in our instructions. You know, there's uh, uh, all the design guidelines that we uh, suggest to work this uh, in, a, in a quick way. Uh, Bryson did a pretty good job, you know, taking less than half an hour to build this. Uh, so imagine the possibilities. If you allocate uh, two or three hours to do this, you will have the opportunity to review the several uh, layouts and be able to you know, zoom in into the one that is the most effective. Again, be depending on your criteria, at least amount of work, uh, the best shape, uh, the most performing in terms of length, whatever is your choice. So again, from this point, we're gonna start, uh, as some, uh, just to show what we can, how it's done, we're gonna use uh, this first runner and we're going to start off with how uh, how many blocks do we have of each one and again based on our design guidelines we're following always uh, the line uh, that uh, ar the arrows create uh, when they are all together all you know can be one section of course assuming this is the same center and radius which is uh, but this is something we always make sure um, it's a quick verification of every block being lined up properly making sure we're not by mistake mixing one of the different types because uh, I've, you know, I've done that. So um, this all seems to be ready to go. So we're gonna start tallying. Um, yeah, we have uh, four of the three inch. Four of the three inch. Uh, now we have a choice here. We can leave this, uh, it's already welded. So the, the start to, that's another possibility that sometimes can be included in the first section just to have a, a one less weld. In this case, it's already ready. So we're gonna take it as it is. We're just gonna start adding from here. 
How many you count? Four. Uh, four on three inch radius, right? Yep. So we're gonna go to our control sheet. In our control sheet, we essentially have broken up the shapes of the, um, the, the, the bends based on the centerline radius that we have available. So in the case of the, uh, the first one, it's a two inch centerline radius, which uh, is this one. And that can fit uh, six blocks uh, and then the straights, of course. The, the next one is a three inch, which is this one. That can fit around nine blocks. And uh, then there's a four, there's a six that we didn't use this time. But so considering this is a four inch, uh, three for on three inch radius, we're gonna pick our three inch radius uh, center line and we're gonna mark off uh, four blocks. One, two, three, four. And then we like to color these uh, just simply to make them uh, uh, stand out and we don't get confused. Uh, crayons or markers are really an easy way to do this. So that's our first section. We like to uh, uh, create a, a system so we don't get confused with the numbers. If we assume that this is a cylinder one, we're gonna call this one, two, three, and four. And we like to choose um, uh, letters for the sections. So this, that's we want, we recommend doing that. So the first section would be, uh, in this case, would be section four A, which is cylinder four, section A. And we're gonna make a marking here labeling it. We want to mark the uh, direction of the flow in the part because this will become very important later on when we have sections that actually combine a, uh, a straight section. So we don't, when we're welding, we don't flip them in the wrong direction. In this case, because it's the same, it's symmetrical, it doesn't really make a difference. However, we still do it just as a matter of habit. So that's our first section. In the case of the EH series, uh, and I recommend this as well, uh, to keep track of lengths, uh, we also, I also add this value to that section that is, this is worth four inches in parentheses. So what I can, what we can do later is actually have cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, and cylinder four, and then tally exactly their lengths. So the, mm. the cylinder four has four. We're going to move on to the next. The next one, how many do we have, uh, Bryson? It's like four. Uh, before four we have a break okay. of the two inch center line. Okay, so that would be section 4B. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to now use another four. We, we still have left uh, in this U bend. And it'd this is really. It would be the two inch center line. Oh, right? sorry, yeah. it's a two inch. Okay, yeah. good, good, good catch. So one, two, three, four. And this is a 4B. And again, because it doesn't have any straight end, uh, it, it can be either way, but still we're marking a flow in one direction. And then again, the length, it's four inches. So on our four, no, cylinder number four, we're adding four more inches. This is cylinder three, cylinder one, cylinder two. And then we're gonna color this yellow. Now, this is something that it, it's worth pointing out at this point. All these drawings have a little bit of a wedge left there. This has to do with the fact that because of the uh, formula for perimeter that uses pi number, which is an ugly number, 3.14, if you work the math as far as what is the actual length of this, in the case of the two inch, you will see that the number you will get is as around 6.42 inches. It's essentially pi times the, num the times the radius. Because we're working in whole inches, we only take the six part of the 6.14, and the 42, we just left it leave it out which is exactly this section so what this means in practical terms is that by putting six of these we cannot do 180 degrees we'll do something short 172 171 but it doesn't matter because what we're after is the length now some people might think this is a problem when cutting but the reality is not because the system will tell you exactly where to cut and it doesn't matter the angle you know whether it's a 19 degree or a 20 degree, it doesn't matter. You just make the cut where it tells you. And that's really the beauty of this product because it has no, no exact numbers, no, no, no things that require measurement. So that's 4B. Uh, the next one, what would be? Uh, looks like we have, it's a two inch center line. We have three on the bend and then another three out on straight. Okay. So this is an interesting case because here we can choose, and this is actually laid out pretty well because we, we can choose where to put this bend I mean, this straight section, we can put it on this bend or on that bend, but of course we have another one here. So to make the design cleaner and save on welds, we can create this, so as you said, well, all this one section, put a well here, and then this is another section over here. Instead of sometimes what we see is redundant welds, they make a well here, another one there, another one there. We don't need that. That's saving us 40 minutes probably. 
-hmm. So this is the for th this is the next one. One, two, three, and three inches straight. So again, we go back to our two inch center line radius. Bends. We already we don't we only have two left here, so we got to use a new one, and that's going to be three inches. So we mark three inches, and it's going to have three inches of straight. So one, two, three. One, two, three. So this is our next section. And again, we color it just to make sure we don't, you know, that material is already used or taken. And we label this. This is now going to be 4C. Now, in this one, this is when really the, the arrow for the flow becomes important. We're flowing from the bend into the straight. And then again, this is worth 6 inches long. So we add that to our length now. Now we're ready to move to the last, to the next one, the last one. Yeah, so we have a three inch radius, uh, just one, mm -hmm. and then uh, four straight. Four straights, okay. So um, three inch radius, we have a lot of material here left. So here, for example, we have a good choice. We can either switch this to this side, or we can ignore the gap, the little wedge here, and just take the hole as a full, and then add four inches, one, two, three, four. So that will be our next um, and last section for this cylinder. That is section four, Diaz and David. It flows from the bend into the straight, and this is five inches long. We add five inches long here, and here this is when the magic starts happening, because now we know that this runner is 19 inches long. And of course, we need to add this one as well uh, for all practical purposes as far as resonance and tuning mm -hmm. but at least the runner requires 19 inches now we're going to do this for the rest of the of the project and be able to fill this out to create the whole shopping uh, list but essentially what will end up happening is that for us to build this part we need two u-bands of the two inch general radius and one of the three inch general radius and again that allows us to put a price tag to this um, to this runner. It also tells us that for every section, we need to make two cuts. So we have one, two, three, four sections. We have eight cuts to make. And we have one, two, three, four, five welds eventually. And now again, all that is cost that takes no time to figure out. So I know that pro to produce this runner, I need to buy three humans. I need to make X amount of cuts, X amount of welds, and have a total for that. And it took us five minutes to do this. Mm -hmm. This is really the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. If this number is too ugly, takes too many welds, too many cuts, too many u bends then we can rearrange it and start shape, you know, narrowing it down or making it more efficient. Mm -hmm. This is really the power of these blocks. Um, and after that, you know, we're ready to go. So if you're okay with it, I guess now we can jump on to stage two and start sectioning our, our u bends to replace with the metal parts. Sounds good. All right, well, we got all the parts cut for this uh, first runner on this. And so uh, at this point now, uh, what's the process for taking it and We're actually ready. tacking it together? Okay, so Bryson really spent literally minutes, you know, half an hour probably going through all these. And it's just, it's so quick. Uh, anyway, so now we're going to label these things just to make sure that, you know, we're on the right track for each one. We start with, uh, you know, 4A, which is three inch center line with um, uh, four, four blocks um, um, or four inches. 
uh, 4B is going to be 4 inches on 2 inch center line radius. Of course, nice job already uh, getting rid of uh, all the flash and the bearing, so it's ready to be welded. Um, 4C, 2 inch center line radius with a short leg. And then flow from the bend to the straight. And finally, 4D, 3 inch center line radius, one block, and then 4 inches of straight. Also flowing from the bend to the straight. So at this point, this completes uh, stage two cutting. Now we have all the parts of the puzzle, and now we're ready to put it together. We're, for that, we're going to use uh, our proprietary uh, welding clamps, which really constitute the uh, stage three, as we call them. Um, uh, assembly and welding we call that uh, uh, part and before we do that we want to make sure first of all we're going to be welding circle to circle so sometimes in the bending process depending on the supplier there's a little bit of egging on the circumference and this has to do with a lot of things the, the, the wear on the tool that is actually doing the bending the quality of the of the um, tubing you know where the, the, the seam is located along the uh, the circumference. So again, we want to make sure that we're welding circle to circle because otherwise we're going to have gaps that can create, you know, mm -hmm. we can actually blow a, blow a hole through it. So the only one I can see that we need to, to just touch up a little bit, this one is a little leg, as you can see, it's a little wider on this side. Mm -hmm. So we just, I, we just put on a vise very gently and just kind of restore the circle. Yeah. And on this one is the same thing, it's a little flat on the top. So let's work on that and then okay. we can start connecting them and setting it up. So now we're ready, uh, Bryson, to do start putting it together. We got uh, the circles recovered. And so essentially what we'll do is um, uh, try to replicate it by following the, uh, this is our master really, just following those bends and try to mimic them uh, the best we can on the outside. And then eventually what we will do is replace that section and then the actual metal one will be tweaking the joints until we, the goal is to get gapless joints that are concentric so we can come back and just stack them all at once so the way our clamps work is that there are two different motions there is this the, the, what we call the adjustable link it has a fixed point and then it has another one that is the one that is adjusted so this first ring is going to be the one that dictates the the angle the, the rotation relative to the to the tube and this other one is one one that creates the, uh, the, ang the arc of the uh, joint that we want to create. So we recommend putting this one on the most straight of the bend, of, uh, the most straight of the, of the two joints uh, that we want to put together. Um, so in the case of, we're going to use a, a three inch joint to a two inch center line ranges of the first part, four, uh, 4A and 4B. So we recommend putting then first one, first the, um, this, the, the, the solid part uh, the, the bottom ring on the st on the one that is most straight and then we put the uh, the one that arcs out uh, to the uh, tighter of the, of the other ones the tighter of the other tube so then what we do is actually try to put this in the middle and then the trick to make this uh, gapless is by finding the highest point of each tube, which in this case is this one, and then this one, and then placing this in between. When you are able to do that, then you close the gap. If, it, if it's off, then what we have is issues like this. So again, finding the highest point of each of the sections and then placing this link in between those two. This is explained obviously in the, um, in the instructions. Uh, so at this point we can just uh, kind of tighten it gently so we can still rotate it 
Another tip is the closer we can have the rings, the better. Uh, it will be a lot easier to control the spacing. So like this, we start building it. And then, for example, we're off. Now we're able to just gently rotate it and start getting closer and closer. So now the next section will be this guy. And uh, I don't know if you want to do, do this one, uh, Bryson. Um, Now uh, Bryson got it all put together. Now we're facing a, sometimes a, a, a possible scenario where we could actually continue with this and, and enable, in order to be able to fit it, we would need to remove some of these, which we can do, or another, because the problem we're having, we're gonna have is interference. Obviously the clamps, as compact as we try to make them, they do occupy space, and sometimes on tight situations, there won't be room enough. So here we have a couple of options. We can either remove uh, this runner, which is only one, which is that's very doable, or the other option is actually to remove the clamp, play with this the way it is, uh, put this clamp here so we can clamp it to this point, point and then use this and, and just uh, tack this by hand, uh, which is only one joint. That's not really that bad. We put a tack on it and then we take off the whole thing and then we can tack it all. Whichever way uh, you prefer. Uh, Bryson, I mean, yeah, as I, I mean, said, we can take off this part, and that should be able to do it. Um, I say we leave that on there, and we can get the top section okay. in here and kind of get it fit in. All right. Well, let's do that. We got the uh, runner here uh, clamped in place, got a few tacks in here to hold it. Uh, so you can see how quickly you can go from the molded uh, part to actually having a part in place. Uh, and then from there it'd be obviously just continuing those same steps onto the other runners. So uh, any final thoughts, Victor? No, I think you've done a great job just showing how simple it is. It's uh, very methodical. Um, our philosophy has always been to break the entire process into little steps that uh, are more precise to control and the result is, um, is a fast, efficient and, um, and precise uh, end product like, like you're showing. So thank you for looking into this. Um, that's it. I mean, yeah. Simple as that. Have fun with this part. Well, if you're interested in the uh, Ice Engine Works products, visit our website at tricktools.com. Give us a call and we can help answer any other questions you may have. And uh, thanks for checking out this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on high performance tools for the fabricator.